God's love. Elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Well, Merry Christmas to you and welcome to our telecast today. Uh, I, Tyna and I have got some friends here who have joined us. First of all, Tyna, nice to have you on the program today. Oh, thank you. And I assume you're all ready for Christmas because oh, it's of here. Of course, of course I'm ready. <laughs> well, I won't ask everybody else here, but uh, I'm glad that we are. But most of all, we are so delighted to come to you to share this phenomenal good news that God is not far away. God is Emmanuel, God with us us. You know, all through history, people have always felt that God was remote, far away in the distance. But, but through Jesus, we discover that God is with us. I've asked everybody here on the set, and you'll be introduced to them in a moment, or I can, you see them right there, to um, come with a little message to minister to you. But first of all, before I, I go to any one of them, uh, I want to remind you, we want to hear from you. Uh, the telephone is a great way. You can contact me, send me a text, and we will respond to that. And maybe you want to ask for our magazine, which has just been released. Some of you may have received it in the mail in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, it looks like this. Let's see if we can get a cutoff off. That's, by the way, beautiful story. This woman, Tina and I here, had a beautiful healing miracle. She was a Muslim woman. And that and so much more teaching articles in there. So I hope you will get that. But right now, I'm going to jump over to Dean Morris over there. How are you doing, Dean? I'm good. How about yourself? What a beautiful backdrop you have on your side there. <laughs> Ooh, so, uh, absolutely. Uh, we, we really feel the Christmas spirit now. And uh, this, this year was a great year for you. You had your first international campaign. You've been preaching for years. Absolutely. And <coughs> so how do you feel here coming to the end of the year? Uh, it feels good. Kind of wish the year would never end. But, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to what's coming up the next year. Oh, 2019 is going to be greater. Don't you worry about it. But I ask you to just get a thought maybe in your heart for, for us, for the people. That, because many people, you know, uh, not everybody is with family. Not everybody is at a big party. But whether people are at a big party or with family or just by themselves, we know that God is with them. So, so just go ahead and share what you have in your heart. Absolutely. Well, when I think about Christmas, the one thing that I think about is so many people, uh, when they go through different circumstances and situations in their life, they think, where is God? Uh, you know, God is nowhere to be found. When all reality, it's almost like Christmas is that point that that God is nowhere changes into God is now here. And it's just incredible that the, the, John says that the Word became flesh, that the Word that created everything, the Word that, that breathed life to everything that we know came and, and dwelt among men and is really now, as Pastor Peter alluded to at the beginning, the Emmanuel, God with us, never to leave us, but always with us no matter what happens in life. And that gives us the assurance for you watching that, and we're going to pray together. We're going to join together, all of us here, to pray at the end of the telecast today. Uh, that, that whatever you need from God, God's presence, God's joy, God's provision is there for you. Well, since we're over on that beautiful set there, that background, go ahead and pass the microphone to Artie there. Artie is, um, this is your second Christmas in Canada. Absolutely. Yes, and so you've, it's a little colder than where you came from in India. <laughs> oh, much colder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but you're getting along all right? Absolutely, Pastor. Enjoying it. Yeah, and I, I'm not going to take the time today to ask you how miraculously the Lord connected you with Taina and I when we were in the city of Allahabad, India. We've shared that on the telecast before, but, you know, we, we, this program is moving fast. So, again, go ahead and just do what Dean did. Share what the Lord put in your heart to, uh, to people who are sitting at home, right, watching us right now. What an honor to have you watching, ready in this busy season. So get ready for what Artie is going to share. Absolutely. So Christmas reminds me, it just takes me back to, you know, spending time with my family. And my grandfather, who was a war veteran, he shared this one thought. He said, do unto others what you would have them do to you. Remember that always throughout your life. And that's what uh, we did over Christmas was we didn't uh, focus so much on ourselves. That was kind of our family tradition. We went out and, you know, gave the gift of the gospel to people. And I would say just to everyone, like Christmas isn't Christmas until you tell someone about Jesus Christ. And it's not meaning, of course, you know, it's merriment and all the decorations and all, but definitely take that step in faith to tell someone about Jesus, just like someone told our family about Jesus. 
Well, that's wonderful. And, and coming from India, you know, I, I have a strong attachment to India. I spent so much time in that country, had so many gospel festivals there. So I know a little bit about the Christians in India. And I know that at Christmas, even more than United States or Canada, they go to church. Christians Absolutely. go Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, not just one service, but many <laughs> services. Now, I don't know how Pastor Nathan, how, how do you think that would work out in Canada if we had services? Morning, noon, and night, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Give it Day. a shot if you like. Will you be? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, but, but we do pretty I, good here, though. We have a lot of services. <laughs> yes, we do. That, that's true. But I'll get to you in a moment. But so I just, what I thought in, when you were saying how your family were going to reach out, I said, well, I'm glad to hear that Indian Christians are not just going to a church building, but you are reaching out to others. Absolutely, Pastor. It's at this time that, you know, because of different government pressures, we can't be bold during the, the year, but we take Christmas as an opportunity opportunity to, you know, blast the good news to everyone and to invite people who love to come for a birthday celebration. And we say it's, it's time to celebrate Jesus' birth. And that's when people of all religions come together to hear about Jesus. So it's a great opportunity. That's excellent. So in other words, Christmas is a specially opportune time to share the gospel. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, Taina, we have experienced that many of our campaigns in Burma, in Indonesia, those countries, we work very hard and people will hear what we have done this month, but we're not talking about it on this program, mm -hmm. uh, because governments are more apt to give us permission to rent stadiums yeah. at Christmas. They kind of say, well, normally we wouldn't give it to you, so we take that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, th that reminds me, Artie, when you're saying that, it may already have been on the screen, uh, we had set us our goal to distribute a million of these in, in, in 2018, and I'm a little sad to say we didn't meet our goal, but we are at the 600,000 mark. You know, some, somebody said, if you, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it. Well, we aimed at a million of these going out and we hit 600,000. And so we thank God that this booklet has got to 600,000 people. That is beautiful. And uh, if we had a clapping machine, we could all clap for that. <laughs> you know, okay, but well, thank you, thank you. Uh, this kind of sounds a little bit weak, you know, but, but anyhow, appreciate your effort. But, but you can help us. We're going to keep going because we believe this message is so vital. So you see there on the bottom of the screen how you could order 50 of these. So you're ready. Um, Valentine is coming up. Other birthdays are coming up. Just, just when you send somebody a card, put this one in as well. And, or, or leave it with somebody. Share it with somebody. And... Um, even now after Christmas, you could say when you get it, well, I meant to get this to you at Christmas, but I, I didn't get it in time, so here it is. But let's just take every opportunity to share the good news that God has revealed himself through Jesus Christ. And so, uh, Artie, with your comment there, I take the opportunity to say, well, if your family had that tradition, and you use the word tradition, Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, I haven't heard much about such a Christmas tradition. I've heard of many Christmas <laughs> traditions, but that's beautiful how your family took the opportunity to share the gospel. And, and maybe in India, as you said, because uh, there's been a lot of increased pressure on Christians in Absolutely. India. And uh, maybe you can just say a word about that as well. Absolutely. So someone, some evangelist told my family about Jesus and we were all Hindu. And that's when we had the opportunity to believing in Jesus, which is why this is a tradition of us to go out and tell people about Jesus. And yes, it's become very difficult in India to boldly proclaim the gospel. Even Christmas is denied as a public holiday since last year. But... Uh, yeah, we want to keep the spirit of... So it's been, you've been kind of under a squeeze there. It's been getting tighter and tighter. Absolutely, See, very much. I didn't much. even know that because even though I think I follow the situation pretty closely there, that, that Christmas is no longer an official holiday. No, since last year. So that's just, wow. So that kind of is a way to suppress Christians and the gospel. Well, thank God for the opportunity we have. So I'm saying, come on, right now, call the number. Get online right now. Get 50 of these and... Uh, you know, we just basically cover the cost of shipping it to you and then the printing of it. So thank you so much. And thank you for sharing that, Artie. Well, Taina, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge for us to take every opportunity we have. It sure is. But I'm going to go to the lady next beside you there, <laughs> Megan. This has been an eventful year for you. You've been husband. back. We're so grateful that you're back working for the ministry mm -hmm. here from the pregnancy leave. And by the way, everybody here on the set are our key workers. So Artie, he runs our office operation. Uh, Dean is, is my associate minister of World Impact Ministries. And so, and Tyna, I guess you know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Megan, we're back, glad to have you back from maternity mm -hmm. leave because we missed you. And so uh, how does it feel to be back? 
It, uh, I was off for 15 months, but it was, uh, I was ready to come back and it, it's nice to get into the flow of something other than dirty night diapers and naps and uh, so it's been a great change. So you come a long way from those, all those <laughs> campaigns you oh. did with me filming, climbing trees and sitting yes. on rooftops, filming people being healed and mm -hmm. saved. That's and true. Uh, so so uh, you must have a lot of wisdom to share now with us, I'm sure, because I don't think you've been on the program since last year, right? That's right, a year ago. We That's honored right. your maternity leave. That's, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, the microphone is yours. Share, share what's on your heart. Uh, actually, just thinking about the show, I was thinking about um, just how kind of the view of Christmas changes from when you're a child to when you're an adult. And I remember um, just as a child, I was excited for the Christmas programs. And for some reason, I was always asked to play Joseph. I have no idea why, <laughs> um, but I was always Joseph. But as a child, I was looking forward to those events. And every Christmas program, we would get a goodie bag. You know, you, so you go from a child of that, you know, those different excitements and then you go into a teenager and the view of Christmas changes then and then you enter your adulthood and you start to get into the busyness of, of Christmas and then you become a mom and now you start to think of others other than yourself. Um, but just as you said, you know, God with us, you know, he was with me when I was a child, when I was a teenager, an adult and now a mom and that he never leaves us, he never forsakes us, but he's always the same every day. Um, and so just thinking about just the seasons of life and how he is always with us, God with us, and through Amen. the different seasons of life. And, and uh, even though our view of Christmas may change throughout um, our childhood to adulthood, his view of us never changes. And it's just an opportunity to reflect on the goodness um, towards us that he has in our life. I think what you're describing is like it's, it's we grow as individuals <coughs> and we become more concerned about others. You know, I've been thinking a lot about that, Tyne, and I've been talking about it in the last few days even, how our understanding of God is growing. Mm -hmm. And we, we see God in a, in a stronger vision, so to speak, a stronger revelation of God. And sometimes here on our telecast, the way I am teaching, the way I'm preaching, I'm purposely, I'm going to, I'm going to take what you said to kind of make a little defense for myself here now, Megan. Uh, I'm trying to provoke lovingly, gently, to, to stir people, to move people to where seeing God in a greater way than we've seen God before. And sometimes, you know, we don't want, we, we just want to be where we are. We don't want to be challenged. We don't want to be stirred. But, um, you know, the whole Bible is, is, is a progressive revelation of God, which culminates in the person of Jesus Christ. And um, amen. So thank you for sharing that with us. Now, Tina, I, I'm going to go to you and then we're going to have a little break. And then uh, I guess sure. Nathan and I are going to take over after that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Share what's on your heart. I was thinking about this Christmas time. And uh, usually this, of course, this is the end of the year. And I always sort of look back what happened during the year. And it is the time of gratefulness. It is time of being thankful whatever happened and uh, great victories. Of course, there's all kinds of things that happened during, in the course of the year. But I am focusing on that being grateful for what we have and what has happened. And God has done um, so wonderful things during this year. I remember Merauke and I remember Indonesia and we had wonderful partnership weekend here in Toronto and uh, so many wonderful things, so many people saved. And also, of course, in personal level, how we have experienced God's faithfulness and uh, his provision in, in many situations. It is, it is just a victory uh, to have this grateful attitude, I think, um, towards the world, towards people, towards God, and it just makes your life worth living. Well, that's a good reminder, because sometimes, let's be, be factual about it, um, we face problems. Not everything is smooth sailing, and I think you've given us a good reminder. Let's be thankful for all the good things that yeah. God has done for us. Yeah. Amen. Well. 2019 is going to be an exciting year. We're going to Israel and we love for you to come with us. Watch this. From where Abraham entered the promised land to Golgotha, 
where Abraham's blessings were provided through Christ. From the Dead Sea to the Sea of Galilee, this will be your trip of spiritual discoveries, joy and friendship. See for yourself where Jesus taught and healed the multitudes, where the early church was formed and where the prophets spoke. Enjoy the old city of Jerusalem and the serenity of the Galilean countryside. Join Peter and Tina Youngren for Israel Summit 2019 as you walk the streets, hillsides, and seashores of Israel. You will discover fresh and unforgettable spiritual insights of God's unmerited grace. Enjoy fun and meaningful fellowship with like-minded believers and meet believers in Jesus Christ who live in Israel today. One person commented, I've been to Israel before, but this was the very best. Pastor Peter's insights about Jesus Christ and his knowledge of the history of Israel made this trip unique. His on-site teachings are unforgettable. First-class hotels, first-class local guides, and transportation in Israel. Israel Summit 2019. For more information, call 1-416-497-4940, extension 4013 or go online to peteryoungren.org slash Israel Summit 2019. Your trip of a lifetime awaits you. I believe this is our premier showing of this particular video invitation, and I hope that you will be there with us. This is, I believe, going to be our, our biggest tour ever to Israel. and We have taken many hundreds of people there. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a tremendous time. So even some of you who've been there before, come back with us again. And, uh, and, and this is going to be something extra. And I'll tell you more about it in, in the days and weeks to come. Uh, Pastor Nathan Thurber. Well, we've come to the end or almost to the end of another year here at uh, the Toronto Celebration Church, but also your work with World Impact Ministries. And uh, today... We've heard so many good things already. People have been sharing here. And uh, I want to know what you have in your heart for people watching who took the time in this busy Christmas season to tune in to your love. So give them something real good. Well, well Pastor Peter, um, I have a quote, actually. I came across it. I'm going to read it, and then I'll, I'll explain it because I read it to Megan beforehand. And, uh, well, anyhow, she said, you better explain it. So there you go. That's why I have a good wife, you see? So she tells me when I don't make any sense. But anyhow, the quote is such. The child who played with the moon and stars waves a snatch of hay in a common barn. In the lonely house of Adam's fall lies a child, just a child, that's all. And uh, it was written by a songwriter, actually, Pierce Patisse. But it speaks of, uh, you know, it's a cute story, obviously. Of Jesus, the little baby Jesus in the manger, waving the straw, whatever. But it speaks of something so much greater, of, of Almighty God identifying with our humanity and becoming one of us and uh, so much more even than just forgiving us of our sins, but literally identifying with us and identifying us with the love of the Father for us and bringing us into that fellowship and and celebratory union and so Christmas means a lot and uh, so I thought that poem was rather unique uh, when it spoke of the lonely house of Adam's fall that speaks of our uh, humanity our, our hurt our pain people feel that at Christmas in their humanity if you, who have suffered loss of loved ones you remember those a lot at Christmas time or holiday time and uh, so I guess my message to those watching would be, at this time, there is someone who identifies with us. He felt all the pain that, that we've ever felt, the loss, the hurt, the shame, and uh, he identifies with that. And uh, he doesn't make light of it in the sense, you know, not saying, well, you know, it's whatever happened doesn't matter. No, it matters, but he comes with his love, that love that kind of goes beyond all our worlds of hurt and all that. It's, he is a way that... Human love has a difficult time getting through sometimes the hurt of, you know, of others. But he somehow, has, his love manages away. And I guess uh, my thought, my message to anyone watching that may have that kind of scenario is just allow his love uh, to penetrate. And uh, it's as simple as an ask, you know. It's, it's nothing complicated. It's not complex. We preached a great message recently, series recently on prayer. But simplifying it, it's not complicated. In mm -hmm. fact, one of your biggest points was hypocrites love long prayers. And so I think sometimes we disqualify ourselves because 
our prayers are too simple. Actually, those maybe are the best kind of prayers. And so it's to the to the person maybe tuning in today that has never tuned into a church service or a, a program like this ever, maybe has cursed a program like this in the past, but you know, that doesn't really much matter to God. He's just looking for his love to touch hearts and people. And, uh, and that's what the Christmas story is all about, really. Well, it's, it's, uh, I was up early this morning uh, rummaging around, then I went back to bed again. But as I got up, I said, Lord, uh, g give me something to share for the Christmas program um, as we went into the studio here. And um, the thought came to me about God with us, Emmanuel, which is, it can almost become a cliche. We share it so much. We sing one of, I forget which one, of the several of the carols where we actually sing those words, God with us, Emmanuel. I think maybe it's the first Noel because it rhymes there with Emmanuel and Noel kind of rhymes. And, and I thought we can say it in, in, so fast and we don't even think about it. But if you think of all religions, it, it's about God far away. It's about God removed, God in the distance. But Jesus really revealed to us that God is with us. And then Paul takes it even further, not really further. He just says it in a different way. He says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And, uh, and so I think that's what we all have been talking about, uh, this wonder of God not being far away and God demonstrating His love by all of that. So other than uh, Megan here telling us that as a child she played Joseph, now that, that was kind of a little bit <laughs> a bunny trail from the main theme, but mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask you that when she said that, uh, Nathan, did you ever imagine Megan as a Joseph? <laughs> no, but she's told me, so now I, now I, you know. Yeah, it's, I, I had a hard time to see that, but I'm not trying to picture that. Did you play Joseph, Dinah? No, I think I'm fine. <laughs> they were desperate for characters. That's what it was. Okay, well, well, obviously you you have that versatility as an actress, I guess, to to uh, play whatever. Did you ever play Joseph, Dean? You look like more like a Joseph type. I, I actually played Mary a couple. times. <laughs> okay, you okay. better give him the there microphone you know, there. Yeah. He's to, you, play, you didn't play Mary, did you? No, I didn't play Mary. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Let, let's not confuse people here right now. I, I want to read something here because I had that thought of Emmanuel, and then I thought we're going to pray together. And I'm always so fascinated with when, when Christ's birth is announced to Mary and the words every every because we, we could look at every one of those words, the famous words that, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's in that context. But what struck me about 4.15 this morning when I, was this, this little phrase, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Luke 1.33, of his kingdom, there will be no end. Jesus was a king born in a kingdom is ruled by a king who has absolute power within that territory. And every king, or today we have heads of states that are, in Canada we have a governor general, and, and in the United States is a president. And so it's, it's limited, it's geographically limited, it's time limited. We have term limits for how long someone can serve in a position. And, and so it says here about Jesus, his kingdom shall have no end. And so we could say, yes, chronologically in time, his kingdom has no end. But then I thought his kingdom extends to so many spheres of life. Uh, your, your physical area, your spiritual area, the financial area, social area, every area of life, there is no area, there's no territory in our lives as individuals where God's kingdom and the kingship of Jesus is irrelevant. It relates to every area of life. And of course, we can look at Jesus as the great physician, the great healer who never turned anyone away, never said to someone, it's not your time. His kingdom extended into that area of physical need. We could look at the financial needs that the disciples had. One time they didn't know how to pay their taxes. Well, that season is coming up in, in a few months. Um, but, but that's a story from the scripture and how Jesus' kingdom extended to uh, setting up a situation where their financial needs were met so they could meet their obligations and then have enough left over. Uh, we could talk about, of course, the spiritual area, the area of human need, of human pain, of human hurt, of, of human longing. Who am I? 
uh, why am I here? What's the purpose of life? What about after this earthly experience? What, what's next? And so Jesus Christ, his kingdom has no end. It, it extends, some would say first and foremost, and maybe that's correct, but it certainly extends to that area of spiritual need. And so we are going to pray in just a moment here and believe God with you. And, and, and we're doing this with the confidence that God's kingdom extends to where you are. I was thinking, Tina, we just released our magazine. Hopefully you got it. If not, order it. I don't know if you can get a close up which camera. I'll try this camera here. Maybe you'll have a, Megan and Tina as a backdrop there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you see the, the front cover there, Tina and I ran into this lady leaving the last night of our festival in Indonesia. Let's give her a close-up of her again. We ran into her because we, people were pushing everywhere. You can see I was sweating here, perspiring after a full night of ministry, but I just felt we should stop. And she showed us some x-rays, how her, her spine or her neck bone had been misaligned and fractured. And then she had gone back to the doctor to have a new x-ray after she had attended our festival. A Muslim woman, i just give you a close-up opportunity again who I'm talking about. She's on the front cover of our magazine. And now the x-ray showed everything perfectly aligned. And so she had just asked for the doctor to confirm what she felt in her body, that everything has changed. That fracture, that damage in my neck is gone. And now she had the x-ray. And so I'm glad we stopped, Tina. Yeah. We, 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 you know, the, the security were there trying to get us out of the stadium without anybody hurting us, but we felt to stop. And I think of God's kingdom extends. Let's pray right now. We're down to the last minute and a half together with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these words we have received today. And I thank, pray that you'll take every one of those words and minister it to the people who are watching right now. I thank you, Lord, that you're not far away. You're God with us. You, you're, you're the great Almighty who, who played with stars, as that poet said, but who cares about our mundane, everyday situation. So in the name of Jesus, right now, we pray for every need, spiritual, physical, financial, relational, and I thank you for the kingdom that has no end to be extended to every person. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let us know how God has touched you. Uh, send me a text message, get online, and remember the uh, reminder we received from RT earlier about making it a good tradition to share the gospel with others. Well, we're down to the last few seconds. That went fast. And uh, let's just get a shout of all of us. Merry Christmas Merry to Christmas. you. We love you. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1, or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.